Hello everybody and welcome to the Import Export Hub channel. Bogdan here, your host for the next couple of minutes. And as the title suggested, guys, in this episode, I'm going to cover an interesting topic, at least I hope so. And it's about the C markings. Uh, welcome to the intricate bureaucratic world of the European uh, Union. Uh, joke aside, guys, this is a really, really important thing to consider as uh, manufacturers play a crucial role in ensuring that uh, their products um, that are placed on the European uh, uh, economic area are safe because uh, the manufacturers are the ones responsible for checking that their products meet EU safety, health and environmental protection requirements. And uh, consequently, the manufacturers, of course, in a close relation with the importers or the exporters, are the ones responsible for carrying out conformity assessments or set up technical files and issue the EU declaration of conformity. And of course, lastly, to stake the C marking on the product. And only after these requirements are met, the respective product can be traded on the European economic area. And uh, by all means, do not think that these requirements are mandatory only for uh, the manufacturers based in the European uh, Union or uh, European economic area. No, these are mandatory requirements for all the manufacturers who want to trade on the economic, uh, European economic area. Sorry. Um, so the same requirements uh, are for a Spanish or a Japanese manufacturer and uh, as a manufacturer basically here you have to follow six uh, simple steps in order to be able to attach a C marking uh, to your product. And uh, the first step would be to, of course, identify the applicable EU directive or directives and uh, its associated harmonized standards that apply to that particular product. Uh, and here the European Commission has made the directives for product groups that require a C marking. Uh, in uh, these directives, you will find the applicable EU legislation to each product group and in some cases, uh, be very, very um, careful, uh, more than one directive applies to the same product group. Uh, for example, electrical or electrical uh, products, electronic products, sorry, fall under the low voltage EMC and raw HS directives. The second step would be to verify product specific uh, requirements and here you have to check which EU directive apply to your product and if those standards are met. Product, uh, products that are produced using the harmonized standards imply a presumption of conformity. Uh, you are allowed to use uh, those standards or, I don't know, to use another option to show that you meet the requirements. And uh, here you have to um, make sure to, and uh, to pay close attention to the directives, regulations on product descriptions and manuals, uh, like, I don't know, product warnings and the contact details of the producer or the importer. The third step uh, would be to identify whether an independent uh, conformity assessment is necessary uh, because when you apply a directive, you have to get it right from uh, the first time, right? Uh, if you are not certain of, of uh, this fact, you can have always an assessment done by an independent uh, conformity assessment body. There are plenty of them in the European Union and uh, not only. Uh, and you don't have to make use of a conformity assessment body in every case. And uh, in most cases, this, on, this only applies uh, to products with high safety risks. The next step, so this would be the fourth one, will be to test the product and check its conformity because as a manufacturer, you are the only one responsible for testing your products and checking that they met the essential requirements and of course the applicable directives and this is called conformity. 
An important part of this procedure is the risk assessments and uh, you can confirm uh, with the necessary essential requirements of the directives by applying harmonized standards. The next step, so the fifth one, would be to draw up and keep uh, available the required technical uh, documentation. And here you have to draw up technical documentation in which the conformity of your products uh, is stated. Uh, made the documentation available to market surveillance authorities in the European Union in case of a request, of course. In the technical documentation, you uh, must include, uh, I don't know, drawings, uh, specifications, uh, test reports, uh, inspection certificates, uh, manuals, and of course, the declaration of uh, conformity. And um, keep in mind also that the requirements may differ per directive. And if you import uh, goods from outside the European economic area, make sure that the foreign manufacturer confirms in writing that he will provide you with the technical documentation when this is requested by a market authority. And uh, as usual with the European Union bureaucratic world, you will have to store all the documentation for a minimum of 10 years after the manufacturing uh, date. Uh, also, a very important thing to consider, uh, manuals must be written in the language or the languages of the country in which the product is sold or consumed. Uh, the manual provides, I don't know, users with instructions uh, about the usage of the product, uh, particularly in potential dangerous situations. Uh, the manual uh, must inform users uh, about the inevitable risks when they make uh, changes to the design or, I don't know, if they use it uh, in the wrong uh, way. Uh, the manual's language and the content uh, demands uh, may differ again per directive. And uh, now the sixth and last step is to attach the C marking and draw up the EU declaration of uh, conformity. And here, as a manufacturer, you must ensure that the C marking is put on the product or its data plate visibly and legibly. And if a notified body has been involved in the production phase, you must state the body's identification number on your products. Uh, lastly, you must draw up and uh, sign the EU declaration of uh, conformity. And by doing so, of course, you have to take responsibility for the conformity of your product or products. Uh, you must uh, include the declaration of uh, conformity in your uh, technical documentation. And for some products gro product groups, you may need to include uh, proof of this declaration when supplying the products to your customers. And uh, you can find the uh, further instructions in the directives that apply to your product or products. Of course, uh, these steps uh, may differ uh, uh, depending on the product involved as the procedures uh, involved uh, varies accordingly, but essentially these are the six steps that you should follow. Uh, now, uh, manufacturers uh, must not attach uh, C marking on products that do not fall under the scope of the directives providing for its affixing. Also, uh, for products that represent uh, higher safety risks such as gas boilers, uh, safety cannot be checked uh, by the manufacturer alone. And in this particular case, an independent organization, which most of the time is a national organization, has to perform the safety check and only after the manufacturer receives uh, the green light, the green light uh, he can attach the C marking. And uh, as I've said earlier, C markings assures, assures uh, the um, consumers that the product can enter the economic, uh, European economic area, thus uh, allowing free movement through nearly, I don't know, 30 countries that make up the uh, European economic area and of course giving access to some 500 million potential customers. And uh, if a product that should have uh, displayed the C mark is found now to have one, well, the manufacturer or the distributor or the importer could be fined and uh, face expensive product uh, recalls. And uh, if you ask me, more importantly, lose credibility. And that's why compliance with the EU directives on C marking is crucial. 
And uh, as you've uh, probably imagined by now, there are cases when manufacturers, especially those outside uh, Europe, uh, and I'm not going to point fingers to a particular country, uh, routinely falsified the C marking. And uh, because of this, you have you as an importer or I don't know, a distributor in uh, the European economic area should check if the C markings are true or not. So again, pay close attention and check if everything is okay in order to avoid potential fines. Also guys, a uh, very important update uh, starting on uh, July 16, 2021. All C-marked products will need to have an EU address on the label and this also applies to the products that are sold online. Uh, and here the address must appear on the product or the product's packaging so that customs officials and other authorities overseeing the market can have a contact person in case uh, the product is suspected to present a risk. And uh, if the importer or uh, distributor cannot fulfill that role, an uh, exporter will have to appoint an authorized representative in the European Union. And here for more um, information, you can check the specific regulation, which is uh, found in Article 4 of uh, the um, Regulation uh, 1020 from 2019. And uh, now that I've introduced you in this uh, web of uh, bureaucracy, let's say, uh, let me give you a couple of uh, products that uh, need the C marking. And uh, uh, we have products ranging from, uh, I don't know, cable installations, uh, construction uh, products and gas appliances to medical devices, uh, personal protective equipment, uh, radio equipment, recreational crafts, uh, refrigeration appliances, or I don't know, toys. Uh, and of course, uh, the list is not exhaustive, so please, please check the product group uh, list in order to have access to all the product that fall under the mandatory C markings. And uh, guys, with this last section being covered, I hope that I was able to give you some insights about what C marking uh, means and uh, why it is so important to comply with. Uh, thank you all for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed it. And as usual, until next time, keep your business safe. Thanks.